What's happening? You're listening to the Lions Sports Talk Podcast. It is the 20th of December, 2016. The year is rapidly approaching the end. None of our sound shit works at all. So me and Joey Peeps are just going to recap the week, have a little fun with it, and I uh, hope you do too. So what's up? Say hey, Joe. Say hey. Um, another week, another weekend of misery for my green and white that I that I barely I barely had any time for. Actually, I watched a lot of it, and it ruined my night <sighs> once again. Mm. Yeah, you're talking about your Jets. Let me ask you, Holmes, did, uh, was it just me, or did it look like on that play that Bryce Petty got sandwiched that they weren't even blocking for him? The whole team the whole team is in tatters. Um, I, I know I made a case for Todd Bowles to keep his job. Yeah, what are you going to do with that Because it's very tough at the two. But it's very, 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 very disturbing, however, how they've just entirely quit on him. And it's evident. We talk, we've even touched on this show how – we don't think these athletes, they play for the nut there. They also play for the name on the back of their jersey, but sure. uh, I don't know. They're, if that is playing for yourself and for your family, for your coach, Jesus. I mean, I'd hate to see, what you, I'd hate to see if you were playing for one of your enemies. Uh, yeah, it, it's, that's no good. It was, it was actually really, really terrible to see. Um, I felt bad for Bryce Petty because he doesn't look too bad, man. But we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a few other things. Let's talk about the playoff picture. Uh, we're going to get into this coaching hot seat, which is uh, the heat got turned up so much that one of them already bounced. Um, find out who lands where next and uh, all that and more tonight on the Line Sports Talk Podcast. Yeah, Gus, Gus Bradley, not a big shock. We all saw, the, we no, all saw that, that coming. We saw that one coming. Um, are you drinking? No, no. Unfor- unfortunately, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying a lame, cold Tuesday night in Ohio. I don't know. Might uh might do some Pilates later or something. Get a little oh, productivity. You might want to start stretching. Um, yeah, I might. I know, right? <laughs> that's a long, cold winter, my friend. That's a long, cold winter. Uh, well, I'm drinking because it's 85 and it was sunny here all day long. Uh, that's a good. A, see, that's it's better to drink when you're happy. Uh, it is. It is. It is. But you know, as I, I visit some of the liquor stores in the area that I do business with, I, I recognize that. Um, People drink when they're sad. People drink when they're happy. People drink when the economy is good. People drink when the economy is bad. Uh, no rhyme or reason to it, man. People just like to be drunk or escape. Or, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest advocate for substance abuse. I, I don't want to see anybody abuse anything, but I get it. I certainly like to come home after a long day and uh, and, and pop a top and try to enjoy myself for a few hours. So, you know, I guess it's time this time of year. It's important for us to recognize that our lives are better than a lot of other people out there. Yeah, that's that's for that's for sure, man. That's that's definitely for sure. I don't know. I don't really get into what I do. You know, this obviously this podcast doesn't pay doesn't pay me a whole lot or nothing at all. So I do have to do something. I do have to do something during the day. And with what I deal with during the day, that's definitely a that's definitely a true statement. And I'll leave yeah, it there. It is. So, um, to all of our friends out there listening, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, um, Happy Kwanzaa. Happy uh, holiday season for any and all, and, and uh, yeah, it's a good time of year. Man. I enjoy it, and, and this is what I really like the most about this time of year is all the family and the friends and, um, and the food and the booze and, and the uh, the gluttony. Uh, it's all good. It's all good, and it's all fun, and it's all moving forward. Uh, but let's uh, get back to football. The playoff picture is shaping up to be a real mf well, I think we're seeing the cream start. This is the time of year where you definitely start to see the cream rise to the top. Um, and I think we are starting. We are starting to see that we know – we pretty much know who the, who the big dogs are. It's just the – it's kind of the middle of the pack, those six and eights that we're kind of unsure about. You know, within the AFC you have – we have Denver. Where I think Denver is going to be the team – is going to be that one lone team out. Um, they're really – they're they're really starting to see the effects of what it's like not to have a not to have a quarterback or an offensive line in the NFL, and you just I don't care how good your defense is, if you don't have either one of those two, it's very hard to win games. And the Denver no, Broncos exactly are finding that right. out. You're exactly right, and I want to thank you for bringing up the Denver Broncos. And I just want to touch for a second. Peyton Manning took criticism last season, or not necessarily criticism, but it was a whole there was a lot of detractors that said, boy, Manning wasn't very good this year. Manning wasn't very good. That team won with Brock Osweiler. Manning wasn't very good. We'll get into him in a minute, by the way. Uh, but Manning isn't good. Manning isn't good. Can I point out to you that Peyton Manning had a tremendous season last year? The, the numbers weren't there. there. There's no denying that this wasn't a Peyton Manning statistical season that you're normally going to see from a guy like Peyton. But 
last year, you can't really put a finger on the decisions that he probably made throughout the 10 games in the regular season that he played that protected the football, and he threw 17 picks last year. Yeah, when he came back from that injury, he understood. He understood. I think he started to realize that he's not the he. His physical tools and everything led him there. It's gone. He's got to make, and he's and so good at making do with what he had available. He's like, okay, this is what I can do. I know where the ball is supposed to be. I know where people are. More importantly, my teammates. I know all their assignments as well, and where they're supposed to be. I keep the ball on the yeah. ground, and I know I have a very good defense. So yeah. I know how to win with this. You just what you saw was a pro last year. Do he was really realistic with his own abilities throughout the course of that season. It was really impressive. He wasn't very good. I mean, you know, we're all spoiled. It's a fantasy football league world. And everybody says well, he only threw nine touchdowns last year. Well, I know that. Uh, he also took that team to Super Bowl. That team doesn't go that far without him. And I really believe that if they had to rely on Brock Osweiler in the playoffs, they don't get past the Denver or the uh, New England Patriots in Denver. They don't get past them. Uh, and I think no. New England showed that this weekend. New England, they really went in there and pushed Denver around. They were well, sp- so great. Speaking of Mr. Bro- speaking of Mr. Brock, though. Well, let's not get yeah, into that. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't want to start. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna have plenty of time to land base that jackal. But uh, you watch. Are you? You promise me? Yeah, I promise. <laughs> I'll give you a minute. I won't tease you. I promise. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, but- and I lost my and I lost my train of thought, dickhead. No, well the, De- well, the Denver we're on the we're on the the Denver Broncos are having problems without the quarterback and what the value Peyton Manning had to uh, had the team last year and it's it's kind of yeah. it's kind of very very hard to dispute. Denver's being. going to 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 likely not make the playoffs. They could even if they were to finish nine and seven, eight and eight, nine and seven would is probably even if they were to win two, go ten and six. There's potential for them to not make the playoffs at ten and six. Mm-hmm. That's that's capable. The rest of the AFC, I mean, you've got teams like the Houston Texans and the Tennessee Titans who are going to duke it out for that division, which is what we'll get to momentarily. But uh, I, I, give me that dark horse, man. If you had to pick somebody coming out of the NF, coming out of the AFC, look, New England's clinched that division. They're a damn good football team. Again, the Raiders have clinched a playoff spot at eleven and three. Uh, Kansas City and Denver and Oakland are going to battle out the AFC West quite a bit. You know, Tennessee, uh, Tennessee. let me just say real quick, good call mm-hmm. in the preseason. You've got to get credit where credit's due at times. Tennessee Titans, much improved, and I, I believe they're the most talented team in that division. I believe they should win that division in they the AFC probably, South. Yeah. But they are no dark horse for me. They're not ready to go that far yet. Are they ready to, are they ready to win the AFC South? Of course. Of, yeah. course. of course they are. And that division's terrible, but they look, they've, in all fairness, they have gotten a whole hell of a lot better. I was really let down by Kansas. However, that being said, I was really kind of, I was really let down by Kansas City uh, this past this past week. I know that probably brings joy to your heart in this holiday season to it see was. them see that to see them drop that game in Arrowhead. But this was a team I thought was ready, you know, t- to come. They were not getting the, the much as much publicity and credit I think as they were as they were deserved. I think they had a chip on their shoulder, and they just they gave they totally gave that game up against Tennessee at home in a stadium where they're usually pretty good if their problems on the road is normally what, uh, what gets them. But, yeah, I, a dark horse in the AFC. That's two big uh, losses in Arrowhead this year for the Kansas City Chiefs. They lost the Cardinals. They lost the Buccaneers a few weeks back. That team's not invincible at home. Oh, no, 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 no. By, by no. by no means. And I think, uh, you know, Alex Smith is the prototypical. He is the game manager. He is a good quarterback. I'm not going to sit here and say Alex Smith's not good. He's a good quarterback. He's a good, he's a good quarterback, but he's not that guy, though. It's the difference. Well, you watch a guy like Tom Brady, Roethlisberger. You know, I, I saw Roethlisberger make a couple throws against Cincinnati when his team was down. They're on the road, tough division game. No matter how you slice it, Cincinnati struggled this year. Still a tough, still a tough assignment on the road against a team that knows you very well. And when they when yeah. he needed to step up and make it, that guy he brought them back. Alex Smith is, however, not that guy. No, as as eleven isn't quite the guy to do that. But he's a good quarterback. Um, no, you know, no. Kansas, City, Kansas City's a team that that uh, they're so well coached, you can't count them out. And there's a wild card, or even if they were to win this division, um, that's a dangerous team going forward. But we'll see. I need to see more out of them in the playoffs before I get all dark horse horny on what they are they're able to do. 
Um, you know, it was mentioned to me a couple times, and I hate to say it now, man, but that Pittsburgh Steeler team is is just uh, offensively they're stacked. They're stacked, as and their Raider defense has played a lot better as of lately. Sure has. As a Raider fan, I'm I'm frightened um, of the prospect of having to travel to Heinz Field in January and play a playoff game there. Uh, I think Pittsburgh doesn't match up. The Raiders don't match up well against Pittsburgh. They have difficulty with good running backs, and they have even more difficulty with fast wide receivers. Pittsburgh's a dangerous football team going forward. Yeah, but the, the one thing your Raiders will have in their advantage is the, is the Steelers likely will have to go to the West Coast for that game as opposed yeah. to the Raiders having to go play in frigid, frigid Heinz Field where, where Carr's fingers are already bothering him. Yeah, no, and that's, that, is, that is on their side. What about the Baltimore Ravens in the AFC North? I'm I'm gonna stick to my guns this year. I, I I like Pittsburgh to work. I like them to win that division. They're gonna win out and they're gonna win that division. Uh, Baltimore will make that. Baltimore will make the playoffs, but they're they're gonna be one of those teams that's gonna squeak in. But I think Pittsburgh right now, I agree with you, is the most dangerous of the, other than the New England Patriots in the playoffs that um in the picture. Pittsburgh yeah, Pittsburgh's the most dangerous because they've started to figure out a way to play a way to play defense, and that was especially in the secondary. And you know, with with Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, and Roethlisberger at the helm, that's just that's just stupid. Yeah, it is. But I'll tell you what, I mean, we are fortunate enough to have really two good matchups coming up here on Christmas Day. You've got Baltimore Pittsburgh at four thirty. You got Denver Kansas City at eight thirty Sunday night. So those are some good matchups, man. I'm I'm excited actually to watch those two games uh, going forward on, on that Sunday, and and that should answer a bunch of questions for us. If Pittsburgh were to beat Baltimore Christmas Day, that puts a, a nice disparity between the two. Pittsburgh at ten and five, uh, the Ravens at eight and seven, and that opens the door. It also opens the door for a third team in a division to make the playoffs. It's a possibility. Um, to the AFC East, that Miami Dolphins team, I, Ryan Danahill without Ryan Danahill, I don't know who they are playing the Jets. The Jets are bad, dude. You know that. I know. Who, I know who they were. What they were on Saturday night. Really lucky. Really lucky to have not not lucky that they won the game by any stretch, but really lucky, lucky play, they're playing yeah. they're playing a team that just doesn't just said just flat out doesn't care. Mm-hmm. They 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 don't care. They don't have nothing to play for in there, and they're showing it. And they're not doing. I almost feel bad for Bryce Petty. They're not just they're just, in this situation. They're not. It's like Cody Kessler in Cleveland. They're just not doing the kid any justice by being in there right now. Let Fitzpatrick right. let Fitzpatrick finish finish out the year unless he's injured. Um, yeah, if he's, he's, if he's not. in. If he's not injured, let him finish the year. You gave him the money for a year. Let him let him finish the damn year because you're not going to have him. You're not going to ke- uh, keep him for next year or anywhere down the road. So you might as well just finish out what you got with him and then start over again next year. Yeah, I get. You know what? I get that, and I also get. Let's get Bryce Petty work and see what we're looking at. Get him reps. Get him field time, and that's really very necessary. However, you're going to get him killed. Yeah, like I said, if if they were if they if they had other pieces around Bryce Petty. Like the offensive line that wanted to block, you know, sure. um, you know a right. defense that you know defense that wanted to do something. Darrell Revis, who doesn't give twenty yards a cushion every play. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Am I exaggerating? No. I don't even know. No, you're not. You're not. Yeah. So it's just it's, but guys like Bryce Petty and Cody Kessler having after taking the beating they've taken this year, um, they're going to have PTSD. It, it, it's going to affect the way they play games. Guys like Tim Couch were ruined years ago because they took ass beatings. Uh, David Carr took an ass beating in Houston as a young man. It just it changes the way these guys play. So that it puts the AFC East to bed. New England's walking away with that. New, if Miami goes to the playoffs, that's a dangerous team. They actually travel really well, regardless of that quarterback. Um, they're three and four on the road this year. It's not a great road record, but they went and won games that they absolutely had to win. Six and one at home. They haven't uh, really. I don't know. They, they they laid an egg. I know they had a lot missing, but they laid an egg in Baltimore a couple weeks. Oh, back. they did. They got they got humiliated, and I, that's why I said they hadn't really played anybody. And you're exactly right for pointing that out. Baltimore steamrolled them. Um, I think we don't give enough credit uh, when it comes to game plans because sometimes, just sometimes, one head coach will have a and, and one set of coordinators will just have a better, more efficient game plan than the one that they're facing on that given Sunday. And I think that that really, that really dictates the blowout sometime when, boy, we got them and they have no idea what they're doing, and now we're going to dish out an ass beating. And that's what Baltimore did to them a few weeks back. Uh, speaking of ass beatings, here it comes, buddy. <laughs> 
Brock Osweiler is the biggest $72 million joke we've seen.